Hey, what's up everybody? Tim Albrecht here and welcome to this week's Ask a YFP CFP segment of the Your Financial Pharmacist podcast, where we feature questions from you, the YFP community, to be answered by one of YFP Planning Certified Financial Planners. Before we jump into today's question, I want to give a shout out to the incredible planning team at YFP Planning who helps make this segment possible. YFP Planning offers fee-only comprehensive financial planning services that are customized to the pharmacy professional. So whether you want to optimize your investing plan, pay off your student loans, or simply build a solid financial plan, YFP Planning will help get your income working for you rather than the other way around. You can learn more by visiting yfpplanning.com. Again, that's yfpplanning.com. Okay, this week's question comes from James in Bellingham, Washington. Hi, I'm James from Bellingham, Washington. I'm wondering about exchange traded funds or ETFs. What is an ETF and how does it compare to a mutual fund? Thank you. Tim Baker, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so the best way that I can explain this or how it was explained to me when I first got into the industry is I, I think of ETFs, exchange traded funds, it's kind of like mutual funds 2.0. So they're both pooled investments. Um, and what that means is if we if we think of two buckets, um, you know, we have one bucket that's a mutual fund, one bucket that's an ETF. Um, what happens is, is that investors put their money into a, a bucket. Um, and so you're essentially with, with many other investors. So you're essentially um, gathering dollars from many investors and inside of that bucket are, you know, billions of dollars potentially. So what happens in the mutual fund bucket is that the there's a typically more of an active manager that is taking those dollars and they're investing it in stocks and bonds for a particular objective. So that could be a large cap objective, a small cap, an international objective, some type of, of, of short-term bond duration objective, whatever it is. So they have a particular objective, which is actually very similar to the ETF side. So, you know, in the, in the bucket that is ETFs, those dollars are typically um, invested in a way that suits an objective. Now, the big difference between mutual funds and ETFs, one of the big differences is that uh, mutual funds are often more actively managed, meaning that there's often, you know, um, a fund manager that's perhaps sitting in a fancy office on, you know, Wall Street that is, you know, has a staff, um, a fancy office, they're paying for information, they're do more buy and sell of the investments that are inside of that bucket. Um, whereas an ETF is typically more passive managed. So that's one of the big differences. Um, one of the things that's different from mutual funds to ETFs is that mutual funds are basically traded off market and they're traded at what's called the net, net asset value. So the net asset value is the funds per share market value. So basically this is what an investor buy or sell shares of the fund at a, the certain price. So, and this is typically calculated by, um, dividing the total value of all of the assets like cash and securities in the funds portfolio, subtracting out all of the liabilities and then dividing by the outstanding shares. And then it's like, boom, it's $38 and 12 cents. That's basically what um, you buy and sell the mutual fund at. Whereas on the ETF side, Tim, it ETF stands for exchange traded fund. So it's traded as if it's, as if it's traded on the market, as if it's a stock. So, um, it kind of adheres more to the laws of supply and demand. So, you know, the market, it goes up, it goes down. So instead of it being at $38 and 12 cents, you know, the next minute it could be $38 and 15 cents. So it's more kind of real time. So, you know, when you buy and sell, you kind of, with an ETF, you, you buy it at a, a known price. Um, they're both, they're both very, um, similar in terms of like, it's a great way to diversify. So back in the day, Tim, before mutual funds kind of came on the scene, you know, 60, 70 years ago, for you to have a diversified portfolio, you had to buy 100 shares of Ford, 100 shares of the utility, 100 shares of, you know, whatever, um, to get good diversification across the board. Now you can essentially buy one share of a mutual fund or an ETF and have good broad market, you know, um, diversification. So it kind of gives you more access to 
um, the market. They're typically easy to compare. So you can compare a mutual fund or an ETF kind of side by side and see, you know, the differences in price, performance, um, manager tenure, that type of thing. You can buy it in much more denominations. Um, but the big thing, the big thing, the big difference is how they're traded and really cost is a big thing. So, you know, um, the price of these funds have come down over time. Typically, you know, ETFs are going to be cheaper. Um, and, and probably the last thing that I would mention is that ETFs, you have a little bit more control, especially in like taxable or like brokerage, brokerage accounts. So what happens in a mutual fund, Tim, is that when people put money into the mutual fund and take it out, especially when they take it out, there's redemptions. That mutual fund manager has to be able to say, okay, at the end of the day, we had, you know, $2.8 million in redemption. So we have to basically sell, either use the cash that we have on hand or sell out of positions to, you know, send the cash to that people, to those people that got out of the fund. Um, so oftentimes there are things from a tax perspective that happen that are out of your control. And at the end of the year, you get a, a 1099 and the, and the mutual fund manager says, here are your share of the taxes, go forth and pay. So um, with a ETF, you control. So like you control those, those purchases, those sales. So you have a little bit more say on um, how the taxes are going to be paid. So, and that's more important in the, in the brokerage side. So most of the 401ks, 403bs out there, they're going to have mutual funds like our 401k um, at, YFP, they're, you know, our mutual funds. Now, most of the models that we use for clients that we we manage are ETFs. I just like them a little bit better because of um, the cost and, you know, the intraday trading and, and the the control that we have, have over on the tax perspective. But they're very, very similar in terms of they're both pooled investments that are looking to get broad diversification or meet some type of objective investment objective for, you know, the investor that they are, you know, investing for, so to speak. Yeah, I'm glad this question came forward from James. Uh, we, we appreciate the question. We've talked about ETFs and passing on many other episodes where we cover a variety of topics of investing, but I don't know if we've defined it like you have here. So this will be a good good place that we can do that. And actually, it's a good preview coming up um, on the podcast on episode 272. We're going to be talking about the alphabet soup of retirement planning. So we throw around you know terms like ETFs, IRAs, you know, Ross versus traditional 457s, 403Bs, 401Ks. And so we're going to define those a little bit further, uh, ter terminology 101, if you will. So this was a good uh, pre preview of what we're going to cover on that episode, which will be episode 272 coming up here in several yeah. weeks. And the other thing I want to mention, Tim, too, and, you know, when we talk about, you know, costs re related to the, you know, mutual fund and ETF. So like it, it typically the cost for an ETF is is lower because they're typically more passively managed. I think another thing to keep in mind is that when you trade and when you trade a mutual fund, particularly if you're buying it through like a financial advisor, um, a lot of times, uh, not a lot of times, but sometimes there are loads associated with that, like a sales load. So, um, you know, if you buy uh, a mutual fund and it's an A share mutual fund, they have what's called a... Um, uh, like a, a front end sales load. So you might, you know, buy a, a, a fund for $5,000 and then be charged a, a 5% commission, you know, on top of that, or a, a C share, which might be like a 1% kind of ongoing fee in the ETF world. There are no sales charges. So like it's, you know, there are no load mutual funds, meaning like your say you buy it from an advisor and they say, Hey, you know, we're not going to um, charge you a commission, but we'll charge you X percent on what we're managing in the ETF world. They're all there's, there's no commissions, but what you do get charged on is called uh, like a ticket charge. So just like you would buy a stock, you know, you know, you might, you might uh, be charged $7 per, per trade or something like mm -hmm. that. Now, a lot of platforms and, you know, like when we trade our client, um, ETFs, you know, we, we trade most of the ETFs that we trade have like no, um, ticket charges associated. So we trade them for free, but that's another thing to kind of keep in, in mind. It's not just like the expense ratio associated with the mutual fund or the ETF. It's kind of those fees around it that are, is a differentiating factor that, you know, they, because they're exchange traded, they trade more like a stock versus a yeah, mutual fund. They don't necessarily have a ticket charge, but they have could have a lot of fees associated unless you see like a no load mutual fund, or sometimes you'll see a, 
a share class I, which is institutional, which won't have a necessary sales load. So those are all things that are kind of like play into the differences and that you want to be aware of if, you know, when you're buying these, these types of investments. Great stuff, Tim. And again, James, thank you for taking time to submit your question to be featured on this week's Ask a YFP CFP segment of the podcast. For those that are listening, if you'd like to have your question featured on the show, we would love to have that question submitted. You can do so by going to yourfinancialpharmacist.com forward slash ask YFP, or you can shoot us an e email at info at yourfinancialpharmacist.com. As we wrap up this week's episode of the podcast, an important reminder that the content in this show is provided to you for informational purposes only and is not intended to provide and should not be relied on for investment or any other advice. Information of the podcast and corresponding materials should not be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any investment or related financial products. For more information, please visit yourfinancialpharmacist.com forward slash disclaimer. Thank you so much for your support of the podcast. Have a great rest of your week.